I really think that they're still considering a trade back. And I say that because I think this is different than the news we got before that J.J. McCarthy is coming in and having dinner and everything uh, with the top brass up here. I think that Michael Penix is so firmly in that second tier of quarterbacks when you're looking at, if you want to say, the top six quarterbacks that have been scouted out for these teams in the draft. Michael Penix is very much in that second tier. I personally think J.J. McCarthy is in that second tier, too. But I think there have been plenty of mock drafts, plenty of informed reporters who have flirted with him being up in that first tier. And so to me, it suggests something a little different. It suggests that they're leaving the door open just a crack. The Patriots are leaving the door open just a crack in case someone comes in with a bag, okay. as everybody says. Well, you realize what you're saying. Nine hours, five minutes, 54 minutes, yes. and 12 <laughs> seconds, 10 seconds, nine seconds out from the draft. You realize what you're saying is they haven't made up their mind. If you actually believe that, you believe they haven't made up their mind. You don't think they've made up their mind? So I think that they have a plan A, and they have a plan B, and a plan C. Yeah, that's not and making up your mind. Like, this feels like plan C. That's not making up your mind. Yeah, but I, but do you think that these guys go into the draft with just one plan? Like, crazier if things they know, have happened on draft If they draft know day. what's happening at 1 and 2, yeah. And I think we know what's happening at 1 and 2. I believe Schefter, the betting lines I have moved. Too. The betting lines have moved significantly in favor of Jaden Daniels going number 2 I to Washington. Too. I do, I just think that this is a backup plan. And maybe it's also, I'm sure that there are those within the front office who feel like, well, why don't we just see what's out there? Why don't we just see about Michael Penix? Why don't we just see what we could get? And if we could finagle this where we feel like Michael Penix is actually better than somebody like J.J. McCarthy or Drake May. Because, yeah, I believe that they know who's going at one and two. But I also believe that there's probably uh, still a lot of different opinions flying around. And so it's like, okay. And they don't know. And so that's fine. If you don't think they don't know, you think they don't know. I I don't personally believe that. But real quick, you have McCarthy number four, correct? Out yeah. of your quarterbacks? No, no, no. No, I have. Oh, yeah, I have McCarthy number four. You have Sorry, McCarthy number Penix. four. Who yes. do you prefer, Penix or Nix? Penix. Okay. I don't even, I don't want Bo Nix as a backup. Okay. So, Arkan, you, I know, like Bo Nix mm-hmm. more than a lot of us. Who do you prefer out of Penix and McCarthy? Um, Penix, I think. I think Penix is probably the better talent. Uh, McCarthy uh, is better in the big game, obviously, but I think in terms of like arm talent and ability, I'd, I'd go with Penix. So you're the low, you're maybe the lowest on McCarthy. You have McCarthy sixth out of these quarterbacks. Yeah, I don't like McCarthy. Okay, I have him five, um, but I, I, I'm not in love with him. I like Penix. I like him a lot. I don't think the Patriots are moving down. I can explain why coming up. Arkan, you agree with Mego, right? Yeah, I don't think they know what they're doing. I don't think they have this all set up yet. If they did, Adam Schefter would be telling Patriots fans, hey, get Drake May jerseys, and he's not doing that. You know, he's telling Washington fans what to do, and he knows everybody knows what's happening there. I don't think anyone knows what's happening with the Patriots, and I don't think it's because there's some tight ship being run there where there's no leaks or anything. That's not the Patriots I know, that's for sure. You if know there what, was, that's a great point. You know, if there was some sort of uh, reason to believe that uh, they were going one way 100%, someone would have said that. No one said anything. Why isn't and, Schefter saying get the May jerseys? Right, and I think that if you look at it there's uh there's really a lot of more so than in past years a lot of teams that are desperate for quarterbacks picking later in the round who want to move up and i think because there's so many that could lead to a crazy deal and if there's a crazy offer i think the patriots absolutely would consider that yes yeah i don't buy that uh, to answer your question why hasn't Schefter said it yet maybe he will I, I don't know he just barely said number two last week so maybe, maybe he will and i don't know it's frowned upon for these guys we're to only t- nine days five hours 51 minutes and, and 20 Jones, seconds as you said draft, yesterday yeah. he said it three times now <laughs> yeah but i'm just telling you i don't know he's got to move the goalpost to somewhere else one of them he said on a commander's podcast and i don't think he expected anybody to hear good luck to your commanders in the draft as well the other two he said on his own podcast so i don't know maybe it's just frowned upon by the league to release too much information he already said i don't want to tip too many picks he's already tipped two he's already let people know what the first two picks of the draft are espn the league won't be happy with him letting you know what's going on and who's to say no one's been leaking uh to Schefter or whomever else and i don't know i thought the patriots were pretty sneaky about kyle duggar so maybe they are more tight-lipped did you know they were going to put the transition tag on Kyle Tucker? I didn't, I didn't know they, they were going to do how that. How come they didn't leak that information? Well, I so, don't think that's as big of a story. Okay, but I'm just telling you, maybe that's evidence that they're Who not going to... picking the three, the quarterback, the future of your franchise, or are you going to give a transition tag to a free agent safety? I mean, those are two pretty different stories. Yeah, they are, of... but they're, we don't have a lot of evidence with this front office group. One thing they completely kept under wraps and no one knew it was coming, right? That's true. Fair enough. Okay, it is fair enough. So, I look, I think they know what they're doing. I think they're taking the quarterback at three. I don't think it's up to Elliott Wolf. I don't think it's up to Gerard Mayo. I think they're taking Drake May, but the Penix visit does have me much more perplexed than J.J. McCarthy. 
McCarthy to me made sense. And the reporting from Rap Sheet is very, very, very similar. Taking him out to dinner first. He's in for a meeting. That wasn't the report with Drake May. Well, we've gotten it since. No, we have, but I'm saying the initial report right. wasn't that with Drake May. It wasn't that with Jaden Daniels. And so the way the initial visit is framed, wine and dine, out to dinner, McCarthy. Same thing with Penix, wine and dine, out to dinner. Now, you just said, Mego, that's not how it was framed with Drake May. Correct. Subsequently, we found out Pete Schrager today uh, in his mock draft, and Schrager, plugged in guy, uh, he has the Patriots taking Drake May. At number three, he says, despite lots of smoke New England could trade down, I believe the Patriots regime, regime will be comfortable with either Jaden Daniels, who's going to, I say, or Drake May. Pat's brass took Drake May out for stakes the night before his Foxborough visit. Mm. Now that's more detailed than we've gotten with anybody. Yeah, but it's after what, the visit. What kind of stakes? It's after the visit. It wasn't before the visit telling everybody, oh, we're taking him out to dinner, we're mm. whining and dining him. It's to one reporter and it leaked out after the visit, which I think is very different, but good question. What kind of steak? I have no idea. Well, what's your type? Oh, what's rib my eye? type? Yeah. I no, I like I look, I like a fillet. I like a ribeye. I like a prime rib. You dumped all over a prime rib before. I but mean, I, I like a fillet, but I feel like that's kind of the girly cut. Yeah. So I don't know what that says about you. I like it. Is, is, is that fillets a, are girly? Is yeah, a girly I think cut? fillet is a it's girly a, cut. It's a small, it's a small yeah. portion. It's a little smaller, I guess. That's it's what t- I mean. It tastes good, though. I, yeah. like, I like a rib. It's either. just like a small, t- tasty little portion. Por- porterhouse? Should I, should I have answered porterhouse? Yeah. Is that how I should have answered? Uh, so anyway, they took him out for steak. Eat it raw right off the animal. Ugh. This information leaked out after the fact. Yeah, we need that, too. We need to know how he orders. I think we I think we have a good idea how he orders. He orders like he's on King of the Hill is how he orders. <laughs> uh, but so to me, I, I think it's significant this came out afterwards. I think J.J. McCarthy is a smokescreen, and I believe that. But Michael Penix, why, why even bother with that? Does anybody does anybody think they're taking Penix at three? No. No. Definitely not. No one that's, beli- But that's why, why that's bother why with it. That's why you might be trading That's why I'm, I'm this, wondering. This like, is what I'm saying. I'm saying it, this, one, this one has me perplexed because J.J. McCarthy's smokescreen makes sense. A Penix smokescreen? doesn't make a ton of sense and you only get 30 of these visits so the idea that like oh they're gonna bring him in just to do medical checks when they know they're not gonna draft him or oh they're gonna do research on him because he might wind up in their division or they might play him in two years they only have 30 visits so like they shouldn't screw around with these too much i I think they know what they're doing but Penix has me a little thrown. Admittedly, it does. Okay, two things. One, I agree with the Twitch chat. Ribeye is the alpha steak move mm. over uh, the filet that you're ordering. Filet is good for me. Is, it's got to be ribeye for the quarterback. Wouldn't Porterhouse trump all of that? I mean, Porterhouse is just kind of ridiculous. Just slap that thing down on the plate. I, know, that's, 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 I think that's like, the most alpha that's, move you can make. That's your, you're being a little over the top Oh, there. you think you're trying yeah. to prove too much. Exactly. That got actually it. makes got you beta. It. But anyway, um, <laughs> the second part of it is, like, I guess my point is I don't think it's a smoke screen, and I don't think it's them just using the picks that they feel like, oh, well, we have this, so why don't we just check it out? No. They're also way too concerned with wide receiver and tackle and other positions that they have to fill out through the draft, through this draft in particular. So that's why I think that there must be somebody in the front office, and I think it's probably Elliot Wolf who's looking at the situation and saying, well, why don't we just have these guys here just to be very sure because as we get closer to the yeah. draft, as we get closer to the draft, everybody, we will get offers that are going to be very, mm-hmm. very tantalizing. Sure. How about so Mr. why don't we just make sure with these guys sure. that, that that Drake May is really, okay. he's, he's probably looking at it and going, hey, scouts, I know all you guys are head over heels in love with Drake May. He got the sirloin steak at Davio's. Mm-hmm. He told a bunch of funny jokes and a funny accent and you want him. But like, let's just make sure because some Somebody's going to offer us okay. something that's hard to say no to. How about Mr. Who goes on a bunch of dates right before your wedding? Like, I don't know. Like, that feels that feels wishy-washy right at the last second, does it not? What? <laughs> does what that are not? You, what are you implying over that, here? Does that not feel wishy-washy? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. I don't think it's the same I thing. I think it's the same thing. They didn't make a commitment to Drake May yet. I think yeah. They, I think they kind of, if you know Williams is going one, and you know that uh, Daniels is going two, yeah, you kind of are. And so you get cold feet at the last second and shop around and keep your options open? They've never said that. I mean, it's, that's very different. That's a very different thing. They've never, th- that's the reason why this is all still being discussed, Jones. So wait, that's in the this reason scenario, why Schefter hasn't said go buy Ms. a Drake May Mr. Who knows that Courtney and Kendra Middleton are both off the They're market. Off the market. So yes, he's yes, going to yes. decide if he's going to settle with them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just trying to play out the metaphor. Like, let's <laughs> let's let's date around at the last second. With a third pick, Mr. Hoosel. <laughs> let's date around at the last second. Mego from George Washington. That means they haven't they haven't made up their mind. They 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 have cold feet. And so I think the I think the analogy fits. Go on some dates, Mr. Who. Just just to, just get that out of your system before the wedding, before the actual day, just to cover all your bases and be sure. They don't know. 
And so if they don't know, that's actually horrifying. I think they know. I don't really think they're considering trading back. Uh, but you tell me. Uh, vote. At Jones and Mego. Uh, you can also dial us up. 617-779-7937. Do you believe they're considering trading back? They brought in J.J. McCarthy. Took him out to dinner. Same thing with Michael Penix. He's visiting today. Does that mean they're trading back? And if they're really talking to Penix, how far back are we talking about trading? How far back are we talking? Pretty far. 23? Yeah. Is this like a Vikings trade back? Vikings where, trade. So what are they doing at 11? They're taking Penix at 23? Like, how would that even look? You guys explain it to me on the phones. Meanwhile, here's Tom Curran with something that I do think is important and I do think applies because the Patriots have touted toughness, leadership, intangibles over and over and over again. Here's Curran last night on NBC Sports Boston. While there are aspects of his game that aren't delightful, including the injuries, including the relatively older age, he's 24 now and will be 24 as a rookie, there are elements of his game with the, the arm strength, the ability to just move the ball with a flick of his wrist, the leadership skills, the toughness. Now, when Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf discussed all the quarterback prospects, they talked about the toughness. And it's absolutely indispensable to have physical and mental resilience when they get here. So Penix, to me, if you end up trading down and getting Michael Penix and having artillery to fill wide receiver, offensive tackle, cornerback, edge, all those places, or most of them, that's awesome. That's great. In many ways, the Patriots should not be able to go wrong in this draft. They can screw it up after the player gets here, but the player they select is going to be worthy of being a, an NFL starting quarterback. Okay, so that, that threw me for a loop, what he tucked in there at the end. Let's put that to the side. The toughness. Is this, is this part of the giveaway? And when Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo have touted toughness over and over again, leadership, intangibles, you know, DePenix and J.J. McCarthy – exhibit more of that and is that part of the reason why these guys are in last i mean these are their last visits right i, I think the last day prospects can visit are tomorrow i'd imagine these are the last quarterbacks coming in anyway perhaps there's other prospects but is there a reason these guys are in last those those attributes dovetail with what the patriots have said they want at quarterback i'll do respect how are you going to sit there and say that jj mccarthy or michael Penix are tougher than drake may i mean michael Penix through no fault of his well, own mean, just because of what current just said how he is, is he has all the injuries Penix has come back from four injuries i know so but I mean, he's also had four injuries okay you know like at some point there's injuries there. That's, that's toughness that's versus durability. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, I, think okay. I also think those are two different Well, things. how has J.J. McCarthy demonstrated any toughness? I mean, no offense, but he has pretty much like a fairy tale existence while he's at Michigan. He's only 21 years old. I would look at that and say, we have no idea yeah, how you, he's going to respond okay, to adversity. Okay, but put it, put it all under the, the grouping of intangibles. Like, could those guys have more intangibles than Drake May, who lost, whatever, four, five, six games this year at UNC? Or Mental Caleb, toughness? Yeah, I mean, Caleb, you know. Caleb Williams, who did dismally with it this year and so yeah i think it's possible those guys could exhibit more of it i think that would be really stupid because as we've said before like i do think that the toughness and your uh, mentality and some of these intangibles that there are they are going to be really important early on for whatever quarterback they takes development because they're going to be in the crappiest situation for a rookie in the nfl i really think that they are like, I think it's going to be much closer to what you saw with the Panthers last year than what you saw with Houston last year. I just think that's the reality of the situation. And so I hear all that and I go, it's important. It shouldn't be the difference in the tier of quarterback that you take. And I really feel like for several different reasons, but a big one being the injuries, that Michael Penix is in a lower tier than the other quarterbacks we've discussed most okay, of the time. But you buy that they're looking at him. And yes. you buy that he's here for a I reason. I think that there's somebody in the front office who is still flirting with it. Still flirting with the idea, hey, you never know. You never know. This is the consolation plan. Yeah, I do. Here's I some of so. these rumored offers that we're hearing about that the Vikings or the Raiders or the Broncos or any the of these thing. teams are, are putting together. Yeah. Here's the other thing, Jones. And, and, and I, we're on the same page. Like, I think we both trust Schefter's information a lot. It's been since mid-March that we got that rep report from Schefter that, hey, uh, these other teams are knocking on the door of Washington and New England asking about tradebacks and trade-ups, and there's no real indication that they're interested in doing that. But that's several weeks ago. Okay. And as you're getting closer, it might be getting sweeter and sweeter. Maybe. I don't know. Curran last week said it would take four first-round picks, and Reese over the weekend said it would take multiple first-round picks and Justin Jefferson. So, like, I don't know. I, I don't think it's outdated reporting. I think some people are reporting no, some I'm things and others are reporting different. I'm just saying that things can develop. Like, that, I'm not saying it's, like, bad info or it's so old. I'm just saying I think especially as we get into this time, 
it's things can develop very quickly. How many trades do we see that happen on on the first night of the draft? Yeah, but I again, I, I just think Minnesota has their trade lined up. And if they were doing the trade with New England, I might be executed. Uh, I think they have their trade lined up with Arizona. Or so what do you think they're the doing? They just want, they're trying to like talk gossip about Washington with Penix and like what's going on with the Belichicks out there. I, I, the best answer I can come up with is it's medicals because he has so many medical red flags. That feels like a waste to me. But that to me is the answer because they're not taking Penix at three, and I don't think they're moving. We all agree they're not taking Penix at three, right? Right. So what do you think is going on? Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. Arkham, why aren't they talking to your guy Nix? He's like the only quarterback they're not interested in. I know. I'm starting to think this Bo Nix dream may be dead here. Uh, <laughs> it looks like if there is a uh, late You're round starting? guy, I'm starting to believe that maybe, maybe they're just not this that didn't into Bo Nix. Happen back around the Senior Bowl. Uh, by the no. way, just to be consistent, they were there. If we're going to cite Peter Schrager, Schrager had Nix in his first round and not Penix. Just FYI. Yeah, so. true. So I mean, I. I I don't know how, what other teams think of them. It doesn't seem like the Patriots are all that into the idea. Maybe that's sort of a fringe idea of trading back and being in a position where you could draft a Michael Penix in the first place, and Knicks would probably be there too. But it seems like if that's the way that they're going, they've picked their guy, and it's not my guy. So, you know, I'll, I'll take the L on that one. But either way, uh, I think that this is something that's very much in play. I don't think it's something that they've decided on and that they're 100% on Drake May. They're just trying to cover all their bases. They're, they're keeping their options open, I, I think, on purpose. I wouldn't take an L, by the way. If Nick's is good in the NFL, you could take a victory lap. I wouldn't no, take I an L. No, I will say on the on the Patriots getting him. Uh six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. Trust me, ask. I'll be insufferable if Bo Nix is a good <laughs> No, we uh, yeah. we understand. Uh do you believe the Patriots are considering trading back from the number three pick? We'll give you some results on that coming back. Uh Tommy Curran also wrote, uh, it's time to wrap your head around the idea that McCarthy is really in play here, uh independently from uh, Michael Penix, who's visiting today. He says there are plenty of stylistic and personality similarities between McCarthy and Mayfield, who Elliot Wolf uh, took when he was in Cleveland, or was at least part of the group that took him. There are similarities between the run base offense Michigan ran and the one offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt ran at Cleveland. Further, the Patriots are not talented enough at the skill position to run a wide open offense anyway. So the offense they'll run, McCarthy is safest, most prudent, rather than someone like Daniels or May. He says, plus he won a national title, played at a big program, and has a high floor. He's a safe and stable pick. What's not to like? Uh, to me, I know who that sounds like. Safe and stable is not what I want. I want a home run. I want a grand slam. I don't want a single, uh, a stand-up double. I want to think a little larger than that. Because a single or a stand-up double might have a good year like Mac Jones. But he might also be on his way out of the league a couple of years later. Uh, so how do you guys feel about it? What are the Patriots angling for? Is it a smokescreen? Are they really considering trading back? And who would it be for? J.J. McCarthy? Michael Penix, Arkans guy, Bo Nix. You can Playing jump. A pop up. <laughs> you can jump in, or you can vote at Jones, Joel, and Megan.